If you're mildly interested in a Toyota GR Corolla, you've seen reviews where people explain how incredible it is. And then you've also seen videos where people say that it is impossible to find and your dreams are a lie. After buying one myself, I think there's some truth to all of that, but there's also a lot of things being ignored. So today I'm going to give you a rundown on how to buy a GR Corolla and if you should. Let me first get this out here. I have zero connections. Yes, I do know a Toyota dealer here locally, but they thought they may get one in this year and they were not going to sell it at a price that I could afford. I have an optimistically middle-class income. So a big markup for me was really not an option, but I do have one thing going for me and that is how obsessed I can be with things. So. Uh, that's traditionally a downside, but here it really seems like you're going to almost need insane persistence to get a GR Corolla. Here's the process. First thing, if you are not already on a list at some sort of dealership, I would recommend getting on one. Some dealerships, you're not gonna have to put any money down. Others, maybe a $500 deposit. I put $1,000 down at one dealership that told me they would sell it for a reasonable price. What's a reasonable price, you ask? That was $2,000 over. Not exactly great considering it was a reservation, but that dealership actually said, we should have some coming in. A lot of other dealers say they don't know because usually they're smaller and it's really unfortunate because it seems like those are the dealers that are actually willing to sell it at MSRP. I recommend doing this as it puts your foot in the door. Maybe you're behind several people, but if you aren't too picky, others could pass up on an allocation for a core trim because they wanted a different color or they wanted the circuit and then you end up with the car. Now the downside to putting your name down, right now, there's no guarantee that you will get the car. It seems like at each dealership I talk to, there's already a few people ahead of me. And what really bothers me is that so many salespeople are just incredibly lazy. And the person that I dealed with at this particular dealership was definitely following suit. Fortunately for that store, he doesn't work there anymore. But seriously, I was texting this person like every month. And despite me literally trying to throw money at them, I was the one who had to ask if the orders were open. And by that point, three people were already ahead of me, rendering my car at least a year out if I could get one at all. So after you have your name in at a dealership, the next thing that I would recommend doing is to call around. So whenever I was checking cars.com, funny enough, like half of them, even still now, are listed under just Corolla, not GR Corolla. So search up Corolla and put in manual transmission year 2023. The only vehicles that will come up are GRs because they do not make the manual in the regular Corolla anymore. After doing that and also searching for GR Corollas specifically, you should have a list of maybe 50, 60 vehicles. I called at least 20 dealers, probably 30, when I was trying to buy this car. This allowed me to understand better what these are actually going for. Because on cars.com, you're almost exclusively going to see the MSRP. That's just what's on the website. You need to call them and verify the price. Some One dealer actually wouldn't even verify the price for me. Uh, they were like, oh yeah, just come in and take it for a test drive and we'll, we'll talk about it then. And I'm like, I can't afford more than X amount. And then they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's way over that. So that definitely left me pretty upset. What I was finding in regard to price, and keep in mind, this was over the course of like two months from December to early February. What I was finding was usually about $10,000 over was the average that people were telling me. Some stores were saying 7,500 or 5,000, but the ones that were like 7,500 and 5,000, those cars were primarily already sold. I, whether it was sold or not, I still asked them how much money they actually got for it because most of this was also me researching. I even talked to one dealership that actually sold it for 13,000 over way back when these first hit lots. And that's all very depressing because quite frankly, this car does not feel like it's worth $5,000 over the sticker. And I'll talk about that later. So I bet you're wondering how I actually got this one. Well, it was not because of the reservation that I put down. In fact, I had to get that refunded. The way that I got this was through those calls. And one of the dealerships that I spoke to had this up for $10,000 over MSRP after their reservation holder fell through because they couldn't finance it. But when I was talking with the dealership themselves, they told me that's the reason why this is available because they had other people trying to reach out on it that just could not buy this thing 
because it was way overbooked. Let's face it, the type of person who is buying a very stripped down hatchback with an impressive motor and sticky tires and a manual transmission, they're likely not carrying generational wealth. They're just people who want a lot of performance, decent practicality at an attainable price. So I got this for $2,000 over the MSRP. I will say the place where I got this from had excellent customer service and they were very transparent with me. I mean, most places would not tell me what I just told you. On top of that, they could have left it with stupid markup and someone eventually would come around that could afford it. So I do want to shout them out. Romeoville Toyota, thank you for getting this thing to me. I still disagree with the pricing strategy. I don't think anything should really be over MSRP, especially this car, because it defeats the point of the car. But this is the only one they had, capitalism, whatever. It's here, and honestly, if they were asking MSRP to begin with, I definitely wouldn't have been able to get this one. So I guess things worked out for me. I also do not like how they immediately put on this paint protection thing. It does look good. They did a good job. Most of the time, uh, the people who put on paint protection at dealerships are just, you know, the wash bay or or lot porters like what I used to do and I was definitely not qualified to be putting that stuff on but whatever it comes with a warranty that covers rock chips and scratches and it also covers tears in the fabric as well I just I wouldn't have personally bought it for myself especially considering it was not cheap but it did defeat my urge to spend like three thousand dollars on paint correction and a proper ceramic coating personally if you can find one for MSRP do not question yourself just get it if it is a couple thousand dollars over look at your finances really think about it if this is a car that is actually worth that much money to you because at that point the value proposition is about gone especially if you're stuck with overpriced paint protection for me i put a lot down so i'm very comfortable with the monthly payment i love the color and this had the packages i wanted which made my decision a little easier but truly it was a dumb money move the emotional pull to a car like this was just strong enough for me to just Justify it, and there is nothing wrong with that. Depending on who you are, I could see the same argument validating a 5k over MSRP purchase price. The car is special, and its performance is impressive, but in my opinion, at $45,000 before taxes, its back road and track competence is overshadowed by the base Corolla roots. The interior rattles, the features are limited, and it is laden with black plastics more befitting of a 25 grand car. Not the worst materials in the world, but it's basic. The back seat is also very tight. The trunk is compromised. You're really going to need to be in love with how this drives and the performance of it in order to justify the car. Any more than five grand over, and I think you will really be kicking yourself because there's a real possibility that over the next year, the norm will be slightly above maybe even MSRP in many regions. I say this because in the United States, we have about 6,600 supposedly coming in for 2023. That's in the ballpark of what the much cheaper Elantra N sells each year, and that goes for MSRP all day. Toyota also confirmed that they will be building the Circuit Edition again for 2024, so I don't see this staying as hard to buy as it is now for the duration of its life. Given the hype dies down some. The exception to this is if you live in Canada, where I've heard many horror stories about trying to buy one there. My thoughts and prayers go out to you guys. Hopefully my prediction here for the United States comes true as more people should get to enjoy this without spending stupid amounts of money. The reason why I ended up pulling the trigger is because it is a back to basics, hardcore car, kind of like the Lancer Evolution was. And it also has the cool hatchback design, like the 08 to 14 WRX STI. I think it looks amazing. I personally walk away backwards every time I park the thing. And you know, it's just practical enough to make most lifestyles work, but it also is capable of sub five seconds, zero to sixties from my own testing. That's not just Toyota's word. It has a fun yet easy to operate clutch, transmission, steering. There's so much communication from the road to the driver, and it has the sure-footedness that you would expect from a performance car in this price point. Plus, I think the idea of a rare Toyota Corolla with a bonkers three-cylinder and a trick all-wheel drive system is just almost too special to pass up. So that's why I bought a GR Corolla. 
If you want to buy one yourself, I'm going to tell you, it is not impossible, it just will be tricky. So I wish you the best of luck in your search. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then leave a like to help me deal some damage to the YouTube algorithm. If you want more GR videos, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, and check out my comparison of this and the much easier to find WRX. And thank you to my loyal patrons. Follow me there for additional content. I'll catch you in the next one.